Hello Saints, peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So far, we've gone through the first three chapters in our study on the book of Acts. And we've seen the Holy Spirit given to the twelve apostles on Pentecost, a Jewish feast 50 days after Passover. We saw which gospel the apostles are preaching, the apostles' doctrine, the gospel of the kingdom, believing in Jesus Christ as their prophesied Messiah, about to usher in the promise of the kingdom of heaven on earth, the earthly kingdom. And we've seen an addition of thousands and thousands of Jews to a body of believers that's known as the little flock, believing Jews under the Apostles' Doctrine, the Kingdom Gospel. What's very important to remember is the mindset during this time, what the little flock was thinking concerning the days that they were in. As far as these people are concerned, they're in the last days about to go into Daniel's 70th week commencing the day of the Lord. Keep in mind, the secret hid within God, the creation of the body of Christ through Paul, is still a mystery at this point. In Colossians 1, we read, Whereof I am made a minister, and this is Paul speaking, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. In, Gal in Galatians 1, But I certify, you, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So all of these Pauline verses that we just read are all talking about this mystery that won't be revealed until the final rejection takes place. And that's going to happen when Israel rejects the Holy Spirit speaking through the prophet Stephen. So we're still within the first year from the ascension to the stoning of Stephen. Now, at this point in our study on the book of Acts, you might be wondering what's up with this year's period leading up to the prophet Stephen. Why is it so important? Well, it's important because this situation with a year's extension for Israel to repent was spoken about by Jesus in Luke's other book, the book of Luke. If you look at Luke 13, he spake also this parable, and this is Jesus. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Now the fig tree is Israel, Jewish believers, the little flock. The man who has this fig tree is God the Father. The vine dresser is the Son Jesus. In Luke 13 verse 7, Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it to why cumbereth it the ground? Israel's fall could have happened immediately. In verse eight, and he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, fertilize it, and if it bear fruit well and if not then after that thou shalt cut it down so we see here in this parable that the fig tree israel was given one extra year to repent and believe and god by his grace gives israel this extra year and their deadline will come when the holy spirit speaks to israel through the prophet stephen this is the one last chance 
That's why we have a year's time between the ascension of our Lord Jesus and the stoning of Stephen. And we see who's talking, we see who's being spoken to, and the administration or the dispensation that Israel is in during this time period. They're in the last days, about to go into the day of the Lord, and their one final test is soon to come. Now prior to Acts chapter 4, Peter and John just performed a miracle outside the gate called Beautiful. They healed a man who had been crippled for over 40 years. In Acts 4 verse 1, And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees, came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now, one of the differences between the Pharisees and the Sadducees is that the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection or in spirits or in angels. A good way to remember that is the first three letters, S-A-D, sad, because it's sad that the Sadducees didn't believe in Jesus' resurrection in verse 3. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day. For it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. Five thousand added to the little flock. Jewish believers believing the kingdom gospel that Peter and the apostles were preaching. Repent, which means turn from disbelief in Jesus to believing in Jesus, being baptized part of the works that they have to do and they need to endure till the end the end of what the end of Daniel's 70th week verse 5 and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. They're still in Jerusalem at this point. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have ye done this? They're asking Peter and John how they healed that man. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole, speaking about the crippled man of forty years who got healed in the name of Jesus. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. This stone here, Peter is quoting the book of Psalm once again. Psalm 118. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the head stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Also, our Lord Jesus quoted that same passage in Matthew 21. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. The cornerstone, of course, is Jesus Christ, which the builders Israel rejected. The builders is the nation of Israel. Israel rejecting the cornerstone when they denied Jesus as their Messiah and crucified him. Acts 4 verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, 
For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred amongst themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that indeed notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done, the healing, the miracle. Verse 22, For the man was above forty years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the, of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was named Barnabas, which is, being interpreted, the son of of consolation, a Levite, and of the country Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. You see, in the kingdom, God will provide all their provisions, food, clothing, protection. They're going to need all of those things because the Antichrist is going to control all the food and all the money. He's going to force everyone in Daniel's 70th week to take the mark of the beast. So if everyone is forced to take the mark of the beast, 
just to eat, just to buy food, then how will the little flock endure unto the end? How are they going to make it? Well, there's two things that I want to show you concerning this, and then we'll close. First thing is the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. It's all about this period of time going into Daniel's 70th week. And if you're not a student of right division, this might be a shocker for you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Ye is plural. He's speaking to the Jews here, and he was speaking to the disciples, the apostles, who are all Jewish. So when he says, pray ye, he's directing this commandment to these people specifically, and there's a reason for this. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What kingdom is this? Well, it's the earthly kingdom. Jesus will bring the kingdom of heaven with him at the second coming. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. God will provide their food for them during this time to sidestep the Antichrist's control. We're talking about Daniel's 70th week, the last days. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see, this is conditional forgiveness here. They're forgiven if they forgive others. This is works, enduring to the end. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Temptation here is speaking about the great deception of the Antichrist, the falling away, the apostasy that will take place when God allows the Antichrist to deceive the nations because they chose not to believe when they had a chance. God will supernaturally keep believers from being deceived during this time. That's why they pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The second thing I want to show you is something that Jesus says in the same chapter in verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not more better than they? Jesus is telling the little flock here not to worry about what they're going to eat during Daniel's 70th week. Everything will be provided for them supernaturally. Just like God provided for the Israelites in the wilderness, He gave them manna to eat, and He provided for all their necessities. This is all about the dispensation of the kingdom and the little flock going through Daniel's 70th week. I recommend for homework if you will read the book of James before we start the next video. The book of James isn't long it's only a few pages of reading and the reason why I say that is because James is written to this little flock the believing Jews about to enter into Daniel's 70th week. James is telling them exactly what they'll have to do to endure to the end. Now that you know more about the little flock, the gospel of the kingdom, James will make a lot more sense to you. That's what right division does. It brings the puzzle pieces together. And you'll notice that James starts out his letter by to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, the persecuted believing Jews that fled Jerusalem. And remember, they're gonna flee Jerusalem once again from the Antichrist during Daniel's 70th week. So in closing, let me remind you again, Stephen hasn't been killed yet. Paul hasn't been converted yet. The body of Christ doesn't exist yet. There is no gospel of grace at this point. All of that is still yet future. And that 
program, our dispensation, is only seen in Romans through Philemon, Paul's 13 books. You can see the foundation of the body of Christ being built in the book of Acts. So we're dealing with Israel in Acts chapter 4 inside the apostles' doctrine of repent, be baptized, and endure until the end the kingdom gospel. They're getting prepared to enter into the last days, Daniel's 70th week. Okay, so that's it for this study. And we're going to move into chapter 5 in the next video. Peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Lord willing, I'll see you on that next video.